bulk was was such an exciting and rewarding case to write. It tells the story of founder Amira Rashad, who recognized this opportunity to take grocery into the e-commerce space in the Middle East, introducing the idea of buying in bulk, sort of Costco style, to a region where large families are quite common. And I think students really appreciate the case because it really engages with a lot of the issues that most entrepreneurs must navigate early in the startup process. In particular, we see Amira wrestle with identifying and recruiting talent for her team. We see her negotiating with key players in this space, like suppliers who have a lot more power in the negotiation that she does as a new and smaller player in this space. And we also unpack her efforts to raise money uh, from a smaller handful of investors in the Middle East without having to give away a big portion of the company. And I think these challenges resonate with students. On top of that, Amir is just a remarkable person to have in the classroom and has left a big impact on our students. And this case really wouldn't exist without the amazing efforts of the MENA Research Center. Um, early on in my career at HBS, I was able to meet with the Research Center and talk about my interests and classroom needs. And they came back to me with this lead to work with Amira and Balquiz, and it was such a perfect fit. And on top of that, they were heavily involved in the case writing process. They did this really essential background research, and I was so impressed with this well-composed list of people they put together to interview, including people inside and outside of BulkWiz, including suppliers and funders and other members of the leadership team. Uh, in terms of actually going to Dubai, I was a little intimidated at first about how am I going to sort of plan and organize this trip and do it in an efficient way. Uh, and they just organized and scheduled everything. Uh, it made it so easy and smooth. We showed up. We were able to conduct all of our interviews in a couple of days while still getting a feel for the company uh, and the city. Um, and of course, they also helped bring the case to life by co-authoring with a member of the case uh, writing team. And I just was really impressed with how well everything came together. One of the most powerful cases I have in my class is about a young woman who became an entrepreneur inadvertently in Lebanon. She was trying to solve a problem that she had as a, as a competitive swimmer, where she wanted to create a pair of glasses, swimming glasses that she could use underwater that would tell her heartbeat, tell her lap time, tell her a range of information in real time so she could monitor herself. And what she didn't know when she started was how difficult this problem was. Um, she started off like a lot of entrepreneurs trying to solve a problem that she understood um, and then gradually found that the problem grew, but that she herself grew uh, as she went through this. And she started in Lebanon, confronted the challenges of working uh, in a non-entrepreneurial economy, then moved to San Francisco. Uh, did her production in China and came back. And so the case really brings together all the elements, both the, the personal elements as well as the, the technical elements in terms of putting together a company and putting together a product and how what the person is and what the company is are often melded together at the early stage. The case came together for me when the MENA Research Center identified Hinder Baker and, and Instabeat. And then they set up the first meetings. They came with me to the, to the meetings. They worked with me to come up with what the narrative was. Writing a case is a lot like writing a screenplay for a movie or writing a script for a play um, because it's different from just writing an article. What you do is you try and bring together different elements and you've got to decide what you keep in the text and what you don't. And they did just an amazing job. It's always one of the most successful teaching days that I have and students refer to both Hin's personality as well as the case itself um, for years after they leave. It was really great to collaborate with the California Research Center and Professor Shikhar Ghosh to develop a case study on InstaBeat. We conducted interviews with participants in four cities, in San Francisco, London, Beirut, and Shelman. 
It was really thrilling to see how well the case was received by students, and it was really heartwarming to work on such an inspirational entrepreneurial story. Working with Alpana on the InstaBeat case was a very fun and unique experience. And while it might seem difficult to work across a 12 hour time difference, we actually found it to be very productive and efficient in that Alpana wrote during her day and then I picked up where her day ended and my day began. So we actually ended up writing almost 24 seven. <laughs> is now six years old. But every time I meet with students, I'm positively surprised to find that I can still pick up on a completely fresh perspective during our talks. I consider it a privilege to be able to meet intelligent and ambitious people. People from all over the world, I share my experiences with them and answer their questions. And as a result, my hope for a better future becomes stronger with each session. This is extremely motivating, and I eagerly anticipate the next case study discussion round. Isiko's case was a very good example to help the students understand the brutal and unexpected volatilities of emerging markets. As an entrepreneur, you have to be ready to deal with unpredictability. And also, you need people investors and team members who are okay with unknowns. Our case really shows the tough decisions entrepreneurs have to make under pressure in a rapidly changing environment and re-evaluate the company's path constantly. In the EasyCo case study, we talk about the founder's dilemma as the term sheets they received suddenly disappeared or were negotiated down in the wake of a coup attempt in Turkey. It was fascinating to listen this firsthand and to be able to tell the story in an HBS case study. Caspi KZ has very unique business model which is built on a super app strategy. We have started developing super app long before companies like PayPal announced their super app. Our super app is a single mobile app that integrates various different services around consumer daily needs. You can pay bills, make person-to-person -person payments, open savings accounts, get consumer loans, make purchases on our e-commerce online marketplace with the free delivery buy airline and railway tickets, pay taxes, access various government services, and actually your digital documents. Our mission is to improve people's lives by developing innovative products and services. And we're measuring our success in delivering on our mission and customer happiness by Net Promoter Score. To put it into perspective, Net Promoter Score of our Super App users is over 80. Amazon's Net Promoter Score is around 60. Caspi KZ case study was developed by HBS MENA Research Center in Istanbul. It's incredible to see how through the case method we're able to tell our story of building the most innovative and largest technology company in the region. But also, very importantly, talk about Kazakhstan, the country where Caspi KZ was born. Before us, Kazakhstan has been considered as natural resource country. And now it's also considered as homeland for Caspi KZ, one of the largest and most valuable fintech companies in emerging markets. And of course, attending our case discussions at HBS, hearing from HBS students is a remarkable and inspiring experience. And it's always great to be back to HBS classroom.